The next project on our 69 Mustang that we called the Boss 302.0 was some sheet metal work. Uh, it was time to replace the passenger side and driver's side quarter panels with some reproduction parts we got from CJ Pony Parts. Now sometimes you don't have an option when choosing the kind of panel to replace. In our case, we're going to use a full panel which is going to go all the way to the roof and down to the bottom of the car. Although you might find that whatever you're building, you might only find a quarter panel skin, which means you have to cut the panel halfway through because it doesn't reach the full way. In our case, uh, we're going to show you how to do the full panel because these were available and we like to take the cars apart and put them back together the same way they were done at the factory. To make this job a little easier, we started by cutting a giant window in the driver's side quarter panel so that uh, you could have better access to the attachment points. At this point, we'd also sent the car out to be media blasted. And by cutting this big window, it gave our media blaster access so he could blast inside the inner structure to get all of the hidden areas that you wouldn't be able to reach very well with the panel in place. Now, if you saw our last chapter on this car, we installed the body half of a Detroit Speed Quadrilink rear suspension kit. And that's important to note because we normally recommend that if you're gonna do a quarter panel or any large piece of body structure, that the car be sitting on its wheels so that its load is distributed the way it would be as it was driving. And this can have an effect on the way the door gaps line up and the trunk panel and all that kind of stuff. But in this case, the Quadrilink attaches just inside of the rocker panels at the front leaf spring mounts. So we were able to put this car on a lift and support it in those areas, which made it a little bit easier for us to work on. But if you're gonna do a Mustang on its stock leaf spring suspension, it's probably best to do it on its wheels. To make sure that everything was gonna be in the right place, uh, we welded a series of braces inside the car to make sure the attachment points didn't move or shift on the lift. One tip we'd like to share is that we think it's important to get your new parts in-house before you cut the old stuff off. And this will allow you to get a good look at the new pieces and size them up and make sure that the tabs are all in the right places and that they're the right shape and size before you cut your car apart so you know you can make them fit. We wanted to take a moment to check to make sure that, number one, they've got the correct side, right or left. Make sure that any character marks or lines or at least appear to be in the proper space. Um, you want to make sure that the dimensions of the piece are going to actually fill the hole that you're going to cut out. For instance, on this trunk drop piece, I made sure that the length was correct. The depth of it was right. Um, this one appears to be oversized, so when I go to put the quarter panel on, I can mark on this piece and trim it down to what it needs to be. The outer wheelhouse that we're replacing, kind of want to make sure that uh, the opening is the right dimension. Um, the depth from the seam to here is uh, at least relatively close. And you want to check that all your uh, bumps and ribs uh, appear to be in the right location. That's what you want to check before you go cutting everything off the car and don't know where you're at. And you're left in the dust. After a thorough analysis, uh, John determined that the CJ Pony parts replacement parts were all going to fit just fine. Back in 1969, this car was assembled with a series of resistance spot welds. And this is where a giant electric welder basically press the panels together and then ran an electric charge between them, which causes a little dimple but welds the pieces together. So to take these pieces apart, you go back through the car and find all these dimples and either drill them out with a spot weld drill or grind on them, and then you can separate the original panel and remove it from the car. Uh, this car had a bunch of damage and rust uh, in the bottom of the quarter panel and on the uh, inside trunk drop area. So John went through and located all those spot welds and removed the original rusty panel from the car. The first panel to be installed was the trunk drop panel from CJ Pony Parts. And this was done to make sure we knew the proper anchoring points for the quarter panel. The process to put one of these in involves a lot of measuring, trimming, putting the panel in place, checking to see how it fits, take the panel down, do a little more trimming, and you repeat this process over and over again until you get the new panel in the exact same position that the old one was in. And once you get it there, you can use either clamps or sheet metal screws or various types of, uh, of welding clamps to hold them in place while you size up 
the rest of the panels that are going to be installed. In this case, we didn't want to weld this panel on because if the wheelhouse or the new Detroit Speed inner wheel tub or the CJ Pony Parts quarter panel, if they needed to be adjusted or massaged a little bit, we could still move that inner trunk drop. So it was put in place in a temporary fashion while the quarter panel got sized up. John proceeded to trim out the remaining pieces of quarter panel as it approached the roof seam and then drilled out the roof spot welds and used some hammers and chisels and actually some heavy metal scrapers to kind of pry the old panel apart without damaging the roof.